Here's something interesting that you won't be hearing on mainstream media about Ferguson. On the 25th at 1.25 a.m., Brian Herbert tweets from the police scanner that the suspect setting cop cars on fire is a white male wearing an American flag bandana. And uh, let's listen into that. We have a recording of the police scanner in Ferguson. Attention all units, attention all units. There is a white male wearing a American flag bandana that is wanted for setting the police car on fire. There's a white male wearing an American flag bandana. He is wanted for setting the police car on fire for party two. Here's an article from uh, Al Jazeera that I saw this morning, which I'll read. On Monday, a grand jury failed to indict Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson in the shooting of Michael Brown, an unarmed 18-year-old black boy. This was confirmed at 1 p.m., but the information was not released until after 9 p.m. Why did the authorities wait until the evening to announce such decision? Because they knew that crowd control was more difficult at night and that night shots of fire and police protests or standoffs would be more dramatic than daytime ones. Were the lives of thousands, civilian and police alike, put at risk all in the name of PR because they needed a diversion? In the end, they got what they wanted, a building caught on fire which gave news stations an excuse to run Ferguson in flame headlines, to ignore thousands of peacefully protesting citizens and to focus on looters to report about police cars burning, but ignoring the police scanner reports that the main suspect was a white male. So that actually throws off my theory of the uh, gang association that are causing this ruckus. If the police were looking for a white man, they weren't looking for a blood or crypt member, that's for sure. So we'll find out more about this. One thing that I'm interested to find out is who did the buildings belong to? Who did the AutoZone belong to? Who did the Little Caesars belong to? Do any of these owners connect back to the KKK? Do they connect back to the Ferguson police? Or are they just innocent stench, uh, store shop owners? I'm going to look into that and uh, hopefully I'll that's been circulating the net for a while. And it reads, what the news won't show. Two Crips and a Blood Gang member together preventing people from looting this shop. So, did the gangs team up and unite? Are they united in defense or are they united in attack mode? 